Welcome back once again to Ask the Experts, and once again we're here with Ken Pierce. Now, Ken, uh, you know this has become phenomenally successful, you know, and and we're, we're really starting to continue to get a, a lot of questions. But what's sort of interesting is we're getting a lot of the same questions, and mm -hmm. and so uh, you know, for me, you know, who's been doing this for some years, it's it, it's sort of interesting to see that you know a lot of the challenges that people are having today in their everyday life uh, are similar, and 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 so really. Uh, there's not 10,000 problems out there, I guess is what I'm saying. It, it seems yeah. to be, you know, there, there's a fairly tight group. And anyways, you know, this one uh, is, is, is certainly from one of our viewers. And, and, and she asks, how, how, how does she grow or how does she develop her own self-esteem? Hmm. Self-esteem. The best way I can explain that is to tell you about a client I had. I had a woman about 45 come visit me. And she was a middle manager in a government, large government department. And she said she came because she wanted to raise her self-esteem. And I said to her, how do you know you don't have self-esteem already? And she says, no, Ken, I don't. No, I know I, no, I don't. I said, are you sure you don't have any self-esteem? And she went, no, Ken, I have no self-esteem. I said, are you sure? And she goes, yes, I'm sure. And she was kind of getting frustrated. I said, you have a lot of self-esteem about not having self-esteem. You were very certain about that, weren't you? That's self-esteem. And she goes, oh, yeah, I guess it is. So then we proceed to look at the seven areas of life, you know, spiritual, mental, vocational, financial, social, family, and physical health, and helped her uncover where she already had self-esteem. Now, what she wanted was more self-esteem at work, and that's where we eventually got to. But she was ignoring the fact that there's all other parts of her life where she had all kinds of self-esteem. She was a very spiritual person, very strong religious values. She had very close to her family. She would felt loved there. So there's all kinds of areas. Financially, she was very secure. She had a good job. So there's all kinds of areas where she had all kinds of self-esteem, but she was focusing on just one and not realizing she already had it. And all we did was take the skills she had in building self-esteem in the other areas and transfer them to work. Okay, so, uh, you know, sort of do a little roundup here, because I think uh, probably like most of us, we thought of self-esteem as a singular, yeah. uh, you know, a sort of event, yet, you know, you sort of divided up the pie here and went, well, you you can have some here and maybe not some over there. Now, how is it possible that you might have a lot of self-esteem on one piece of pie and not on the other. That's because of your value system. Basically, we do, our value system determines what we focus on. For example, let's say that uh, let's say there's a person, a 20 year old, and 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 this let's say it's a guy, and he's saying, "Well, I want to focus on my career," and so that's what he does. Well, that's where he focuses attention, but he may be ignoring his finances. So all of a sudden, he gets into financial difficulty. So he has to say, "Oh, I got to set aside some time for this to go over here." Well, we, all, we only have 24-7. So the trick is to always to balance our attention to each area of our life so we feel okay, so we feel like we're honoring all of us, not just a part of us. Great. Well, uh, Ken, uh, just one other quick thing, and, and uh, maybe this is me, but I would think this probably runs in a number of uh, people's heads. Uh, self uh, or sorry, Self-esteem seems to be matched with age or in our minds with age. As you grow, you maybe grow more self-esteem or you become more confident. And so maybe I'm kind of crossing those two. But, you know, is, is it, does age play a role? Well, it, it, it's, more, it's less age and more experience. Some people can have 50 years of the same year over and over again. Other people can have 20 years of a variety of experiences and be therefore wiser than someone who's 50. And, and wisdom is actually finding the crisis in the, op or sorry, finding the opportunity in the crisis, which is really an application of the law of symmetry, which is that they found the balance. I can tell you another quick story. I met a woman in Houston Airport uh, about three years ago. Her name was Lily. I won't tell you her last name. But anyway, she was 78. And we were waiting for the Air Canada flight back to Toronto. And we got talking. And we got discussing you know, what we do and all this stuff. And she's retired, of course. And she's, she was a war bride to Canada in 1945 from Scotland. And she was a widow. She had two children, uh, one who died at 10 through leukemia. Uh, the other son lives in Toronto. He was married but had no children, so she was not a grandparent. She had five siblings. Four were deceased. And the other last remaining sister lived in Houston. And she spent three years with this sister every year just to keep the contact, you know. And she was heading home after the summer. This was in September. So I, we could talk, and she asked me what I did, and I was talking what I did, and my work in psychology, and, and this, my exploration of this law of symmetry. And I, and I said to her, can I ask you a question? And she said, sure. I said, can I ask you, how would you summarize your whole life, all 78 years? And she stopped, and she said, Ken, no one's ever asked me that before. 
I said, yes, I realize. But how would you summarize it? And she said, well, you know, I went through the Depression. And I went through two world wars. I came to Canada knowing one person, my husband. I'm a widow. I've got one sibling left. I've got one child left. I said, yes, I realize you've told me that. But how would you summarize your whole life? And she said, it was perfect for me. I wouldn't change a thing. Now, that's wisdom. That's the law of symmetry. And we're all striving to get to that level of awareness. And we have to do it our own way. Well, if that isn't a wonderful example for you, I don't know what is, because if you can look at your own life and say it's been perfect for you, I, you know, you're certainly in a good place. And if you actually can't answer like that, I think you might want to watch a couple of the other of these videos that are coming up uh, that really kind of helps point uh, everyone in the right direction. So really, Ken, I, I really thank you for taking the time and helping us sort of understand some of the primary basic things we all struggle with every day. My pleasure. Thank you.